Today I'm reacting to the crazy watches worn by Hollywood actors. Before we get into the video, make sure you subscribe to the channel now. And if you want to buy or sell a watch, your watch, your brother's watch, your mom's watch, go to brightandpinion.com now. I'm really curious how many of these actors are actually sponsored to wear these watches. By the way, there's nothing wrong with that, but just to point it out. Jacob Elordi. You know what? No. Who's Jacob Elordi? It's in a new movie called Saltburn with Barry Keoghan. I know Barry. Barry and I uh, DM'd back in the day. Like, this is many years ago. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. And then he all followed me. No. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm actually quite heartbroken about that. G'day, GQ. Uh, I'm Jacob Elordi, and these are my 10 essentials. Why is there a Rolly Flex there? It's a camera. Cool. Don't know why he's using Kodak film for that Rolly Flex either. He should be using Ilford. Oh, sorry, there's a watch channel, not cameras. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm also a camera expert, you know? I've had a watch with me, you know, for as long as I can remember since I was small. But it's not so much sort of like the timekeeping aspect. I like the weight of it and I like the way that it feels. It helps me kind of not feel naked, I suppose. This watch is from Tag, it's the Monaco. I got this just recently in Monaco. This is the Dark Lord. Steve McQueen wore uh, the original Monaco with the blue face of this back in the day. It kind of feels like a, a cool piece of history to have. And then I, you know, I found out there's pictures online of Stanley Kubrick on the set of Clockwork Orange with a Monaco as well. So it kind of has a rich cinematic history, which is, you know, it's exciting. To be fair, the Tecoria Monaco has one of the richest histories in watchmaking, really. The first Monaco was introduced in 1969 in an era where Jack Hoyer, at that time the CEO and the grandson of Edward Hoyer, made a complete new caliber. Project 99, or as we now know, caliber 11. A caliber that was produced, I believe, together with Bretling and Hamilton Buren, now known as the Hamilton Watch Company. That movement was actually just made and produced for the Octavia and the Carrera, I believe. not. For for the Monaco, but because Jack Hoyer was in a battle on a, who's gonna make the first chronograph together with Seiko and Zenith, they wanted to come out with something unique, a different shape. So they went for the absolute opposite of a round watch, a square watch. Don't be a... The watch is of course named after the famous F1 Monaco Grand Prix. He's referring to this watch as the Tag Monaco. This watch is from Tag, it's the Monaco. I would actually argue to say it's the Hoyer Monaco. Because Hoyer was on the verge of bankruptcy, the Tag Group, Technologies de Avant-Garde, basically saved Hoyer and rebranded it as Tag Hoyer. So I would actually argue to say it's a Hoyer Monaco. In 1999, LVMH bought Tag Heuer completely. So the Tag Group has nothing to do with Tag Heuer anymore. There's of course a lot of differences with the first Heuer Monaco, reference number 1133B, and this one. First of all, the Dark Lord has the size 39 mil. It's a significantly smaller size and it features a complete different caliber. Tag Heuer is still using caliber 11, but in this particular model features the H02 module or H02 movement, which was actually made in honor of Edward Heuer, the founder of Heuer. Long story short, cool history, don't like the Watch. This is the Monaco nicknamed the Dark Lord. Reference number CBL2180 and it's worth, I think, new and around eight, nine thousand dollars But you can pick them up pre-owned in about five, six, seven, probably. By the way, this is 100% sponsored, like, 100%. Timothy Chalamet. <laughs> That's the one. What, what, what is his name then? Timothy Chalamet. Chalamet. Yeah. Is Bob Dylan you're playing? A young Bob Dylan, yes. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Young Bo Bob Dylan. Bob Dylan is an absolute... Legend, mate. <laughs> you just didn't yeah, yeah, no, I was thinking, I was looking at this woman. Have you met him? Are you going to meet him? I haven't met him. Uh, you know, I, w I would love to meet him, but, you know, don't want to put any pressure on in any way. And I, uh, I just saw him live, actually, three weeks ago in New York. Okay. It was at a sold out King's Theater, and, and it was absolutely brilliant. You know, uh, I don't know how to describe it, it was magical. Yeah. And they bag your phone at the front, and obliges you to be present. Timothy is wearing a girl's watch. Bit random. Listen, lovely on girls, right? But it's a girl's watch. A girl's watch with a really big history, to be fair. The watch is named after Jean Tussaud, which is the first woman in an extremely high management position. She was like the creative director of Cartier Jewelry House, Jewelry and Watches in 1933. It's insane. She was named La Panthère, and that's where the, the watch is named. This is the Cartier Panthère. She's never seen the watch that was actually named after her because she died in the late 70s. And the Panthère was first introduced in 1983. Rest in peace. 
Don't be a dick. Give me an uproar. The bracelet on this watch makes it actually a panther. It's a piece of jewelry with a timekeeping device included. I think he's wearing a small or a mid-sized panther and they're going for about five, six, seven thousand dollars. I think it's cool. It's like he's being unique. He's being himself. I, I appreciate that, but I also find it a pretty f***ing gay. <laughs> <laughs> Is he gay? No. Fair enough. He was in a gay film, huh? Which gay film? Call Me By Your Name. Call Me By Your Name, baby. Has sex with a peach. Is what? Sex with a peach. A peach? Yeah. The fruit. Oh, he comes in a fruit. So then he's gay. Naughty, naughty. Timothy, there's nothing wrong with that, by the way. Just joking, right? I would wear the pump there. Ah, mate, I'll bring you a bag of peaches tomorrow. Or iced tea peach. You can stick your knob in that. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Listen, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter where you put your knob in. It is about the watch. <laughs> Do you think he's played by Cartier, by the way? It's yes. It's hard to know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, for f sake. Zach Efron. You know Zach? Right, I do. I know him from, uh, what do you call that? That that he's a cop or something? Or? High School Musical? I, no, High School He was a dancer, right? I actually watched that. There's a movie with him. High School Musical 2 is probably one of the best movies ever created. Oh yeah, but your favorite movie ever created was La La Land. So can we just tone this down a wee bit, yeah? yeah. You just love musicals. That's it. I do. I watched a movie yesterday. It was actually quite interesting. It's called? National Lagoon Christmas yeah. Vacation. Nah, there's no storyline. It's just a lot of shit. But it is quite funny, like old school 90s funny. Like I'm Zac Efron, and I just got my star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Zac, it has been an honor to share the screen with you and to become your close friend. Efron! Yeah, that's pretty damn f cool, to be honest. And Zach, congratulations, well done, insane, well deserved. I see him becoming James Bond in 10 years. He will be. He I will said be. it first. It's always been British guy. Let's move on. He's wearing a Portuguese. -er. Zach is wearing a- Portuguese. -er. I genuinely think he can be James Bond, you know. He can, though. He can act like a British guy. By the way, they're not all British, you're my Except for Pierce. Exactly, you my Start bastard. Pierce represent, no bother, yeah, son. He, he was recent. He wasn't. It was. He, what? British Brits. Aye. Uh, will Tom Brady. No, what do you call your man? Is that Tom Brady? Tom Brady? Tom, no. Tom Hiddleston? No, the really cool guy that was the bad guy in uh, Dark Knight. Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy. He can be the baddest motherfucker in James Bond ever. Swear to IWC Portuguese. IWC is actually a really interesting history, including supplying watches to the Nazis, but we'll not talk about that too They're much. Nazi watch company? They're Nazi watch company. Like, I mean, what the f is going on there? To be fair, Stoa, Elon and Sune, they all made watches for the German Luftwaffe, which is the Air Force. There's a wee bit of irony in this story because IWC was founded by an American guy. So what the American army did was bomb the entire of Schaffhausen. Literally. IWC, I will conquer. They supplied the watches to the Nazis, to the German Air Force. Nice supporting the boys, I'd love to see it. I <laughs> Sake. The big pilot was like a proper tool watch for the Nazis. For the Nazis. Yeah, I mean, I'm sorry, it is what it is. <laughs> yeah, but that's as well why the crown was so big because you had to change the time with your gloves on and you would able to measure speed and distance while using a watch or using the big pilot. There's more irony in this story, right? Because in the late 70s, <laughs> what in the late 70s, they were bought by an investment fund, an automotive group <laughs> called Adolf, <laughs> Adolf Schindling. <laughs> so they brought Adolf back. I'm not <laughs> <laughs> that investment fund owned, I believe as well, automotive companies. And I think that that's one of the reasons why the marketing department of IWC is focusing a lot of on automotive stuff. And then specifically the watch that Zac Efron is wearing because we're, we're talking about his watch. My apologies on the Nazi diversion. The specific watch he's wearing is a Portugueser. The Portugueser is a line of watches introduced in the 30s and still today one of the most popular models of that brand. And I must say, I own one Portugueser. He's called Juan, he does your garden. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to be serious here, lads. You see, I'm trying to do serious stuff here, right? It looks like the rose gold perpetual calendar, AWC Portugueser with the blue dial. And I do not know how much that watch goes for. If I would guess, it would be between forty and $50,000 retail, but it's probably worth about half of that. Can I just point out, my grandfather is, was a war hero. Done. <laughs>
Barry Keoghan. So I saw the film and I loved it. Um, congrats on this project. So this movie set in 2006. I love all the music. Barry, are you shocked as I am that this is now considered a period piece of sorts because I'm feeling kind of old? What? Yeah, 2006, man. Wow. <laughs> that does make me... Is that, is that the same guy? That's, yes, Jacob Elordi from earlier. Oh, I now see that. Yes. Yeah. Jacob is wearing a Cartier tank. He loves Cartier. Clearly, he loves it. Barry, he looks like a f***ing cool c right? What a guy. He's wearing an Omega Seamaster. That's what I can see, but... Is this a Seamaster? I can't f***ing see it. It looks like a Seamaster, to be honest. I don't know what it is precisely, but... Forget about the watch. What the f*** is he wearing? I leave it on carpet, I think. He's still a cool c***, whatever. Because Pierce Brosnan was like the James Bond, right? Can he be the new James Bond then? The, um, in the next 10, 15 years, he looks like he could be that guy. It depends how soon Britain conquer Ireland again. <laughs> Yeah, mate, like, I, I cannot, sorry, I cannot see it. I cannot see the watch. We'll move on. Paul Muscal. Paul Mescal. Mescal. Hello, my name is Paul Mescal, and I'm going to be doing a look. Is he Irish, too? He's Irish. Yeah, what the f*** is going on here? Why do we? Why did you put in the Hollywood actors and not Irish actors? To be fair, we've shown here that there's bigger and better Irish actors than there's British ones. Bar Tom Brady, because, or Tom Hardy, <laughs> because he's f***ing... Like, Irish I am, actors are the best. What do you call your Bellamina man again? What do you call him? <laughs> Liam Neeson. Liam Neeson, f***ing right. He's a mob <laughs> One of my life goals before I die is meet Liam Neeson. You might not like him, he played Schindler. F*** <laughs> 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 off you, f***ing He's him. not the opposition. Oh, Jesus. This is for the British Fashion Awards. And I remember trying this Gucci look on in LA. I think this was 2021 or 22. And I think this would have been, at that point, probably the look that was maybe the most out there. I remember seeing it on a hanger and I was like, I don't think that's gonna be for me. And then, then trying it on, I was like, okay, I loved it. I loved the uh, Gucci like deconstructed dicky bow and just the like salmon, like kind of sheer shirt underneath. And then the Cloche de Cartier watch, I think it was, it had just launched that year and I was, very pleased with myself that evening. Close to Cartier, yeah. That's probably my least favorite Cartier ever produced. And now by Cartier lovers, I am now being shot in the head. It actually has a, quite a rich history and was first seen around the 1920s, maybe 1925. Been on and off the radar, on and off the catalog through the years. It's now part of their heritage collection, the Privé collection, the most important pieces of Cartier. I'm not a big fan of that watch. It's not my type, although I'm, I look relatively on the Plus size. He's plus size. Why is that the only political correct thing you said? Tell us about the cloche. No. It's boring. You wouldn't wear it? No. Cartier, very kindly, this watch that I'm wearing on the left or in the, in the black suit, they dated on the back of it the first screening of After Sun on the back of it. So that watch in particular means a, a great deal to me. He's a cool c. He's a f cool guy. I'm not fully a watch guy. I'm a watch guy at like um, going to things. I, f I, f I find them difficult to wear on like a day to day basis just because I didn't grow up wearing them. And, and, and there's something about like going out to an event or when you feel like you're dressing up and you put a watch on, it just feels more special to me. We'll make you a watch guy, Pascal. We'll make you a watch guy. <laughs> Pascal? What is his name, Mescal? <laughs> what is his Paul name? Mescal. Oh, Paul. <laughs> Pascal. Yeah, f up, guy. He works in your garden too. <laughs> you know what the tank is actually based on? What? A f tank. Yeah, this tank is lovely. What do you want me to say? I don't. Doesn't fit me. Stephen Graham, my mate. I wouldn't say it's my mate. I would love to be his mate. Stephen Graham was a guest at the opening of the Pride and Pinion Boutique, my first ever boutique in Belfast. He showed up and I, that, that, that was special. And still to date, I'll never forget that. My four favorite films of all time. We that's hard. That. No, no, I'm not being funny about you, but that takes- Sorry to pause it, but he can never be James Bond. He can only be the villain. And it goes, Kez. Can I have the Godfather and one and two all the same? You can keep three, but can I have one and two together? Okay, sweet. True romance. What's my favourite? Serpico. And I've got one more. Okay. I've got a great British film in there. That was Kez. There's loads of others, but I'm going to go Jungle Book. Jungle Book? 
What would your top four favorite films be? A Beautiful Mind, Russell Crowe, Donnie Brasco, because it's four favorite movies, right? Yeah. Can I not make it five? I'll let you have five. Okay, good, good, good. Scarface, that's what I needed to put in because that's the f belter, right? There's a movie, it's called The Long Weekend. It's one of the funniest movies I've ever seen in my life. I cannot get it anywhere for the life of me. Not on Netflix, Amazon, Apple, not on any of these streaming services. I cannot find that movie. The Long Weekend, definitely. Inglorious Bastards. I mean, that is funny, like. But what a guy, he's wearing a Rolex Daytona. I think it looks like the 16520 Rolex Daytona. That shape was actually introduced in 1980 the year after I was born. So I'm a year older than this shape of Daytona. Steven, if you're ever back in Belfast, love to hang out, mate. Robert Downey Jr. On one of these Avengers movies, you like take off your shirt or thing and you were- you were He's not wearing a watch. Really good shape. And the director was like, we got it. You're like, oh, can I please stop dieting and working out now? <laughs> um, exactly. There is no one I've ever come across who is actually more anxious to not be vain past the point where it is necessary to achieve an end for their work. Is that a compliment? It's a huge compliment. <laughs> what is that? Some f***ing fake remake of a f***ing piece of shit, Richard Mille? Or what is that? The case shape looks like Richard Mille, but I don't see any screws in the bottom of the case and a really weird type of strap that I've never seen before. Definitely not with Richard Mille. This looks like a f***ing homage to Richard Mille, to be honest. What is this? Meal, I can't be, mate. That's not a Richard Meal. Robert Downey Jr. is nothing less than Infinity Stones. There you go. Told you, it's a f***ing piece of shit. Robert Downey Jr., I saw you made some big upgrades in your collection. They're all f***ing worthless now because of that f***ing piece of shit. Nah, I'm done, mate. I'm done. F sitting here for f two hours looking at f watches now. Let me show some titties. See me see some titties. Piece of shit.